We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. And welcome to the Going Off Track podcast. We are back with our Qatar Grand Prix recap. Um, we are a day late because um, we were busy. Emily was traveling. Um, but we are here now. We have so much to talk about. Um, but first of all, so I'm still tired. <laughs> Uh, I'm, Girl, I'm still, so I'm still, still I'm still recovering. Your, your, you were traveling halfway around the world, um, but we, I, I have personally made it through my like two week gauntlet of family events, and I am very ready to like take some time off and recover, um, and and just like relax and get back into my own routine. Oh, I could only wish. Yeah, I left the states yesterday. Yesterday. Yes. Got into Argentina this morning and, like, started working the second I landed. Yes. Um, so, and I didn't sleep last night at all. And I'm like, oh, I can just, like, chill now for a bit. But I can't because now I'm, like, done with my exams until the new year. But I have three groups of people coming down between now and the end of the year. And it's just, like, back to back to back to back. And I'm just like, cool. Don't get a break. Love this for me. I'm very excited to see family and friends. So, so blessed that they're coming to visit me. But um, I'm also just kind of wanting some personal space after living in a house with my parents for however long I was back home. Uh, I just need my personal. I don't have Winston yeah. tonight. I literally oh. it's just me. I know. I made my bed with my new sheets. And I'm just so excited to, like, snuggle in and just be so happy. But, yeah, it's the little things, Catherine. It's the little things. Yeah. I hear but, you. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Speaking of little things, um, that sweatshirt looks like a, a very interesting brand. Da, 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 da. It is. This is my Danny Rick sweatshirt. So I um, am obsessed with Ashante sweatshirts. They're so big and comfy. This is like an extra large or whatever. But yes, this is Danny Ricardo's brand. Actually, I think he has a new drop coming out for Ooh. Austin. So he usually does a cool one for Austin. Last year it was like the Ricardo Rodeo or Rick Rodeo or something like that. It was pretty cool. A bunch of like Western theme stuff. But yes, I'm full blown Danny supporter coming back for Coda. I'm pumped. So nice. Nice. Looks it looks great. I, I would love to like think about getting a new sweatshirt, except it's still 95 degrees out here in Arizona. And I just I can't. <laughs> Okay, it, it was actually hot here today, except I am, oh, I just, I love sweatshirts. I will always wear them just to be comfy. So, I don't know. That's fair. Sweatshirt equals comfort. But now that we know about my, <laughs> my entire life <laughs> for the past 24 hours, let's get into our hot lap recap of the Qatar Grand Prix. So, starting things off, Oscar Piastri got his first uh, F1 win in the sprint, but was completely and totally overshadowed by Max um, clinching his third straight driver's championship with his P2 finish, um, which was kind of hilarious when if you were watching all the coverage. It's like, uh, remember Oscar? He's there too. <laughs> I also feel like he was kind of overshadowed by the whole Pirelli incident this weekend. So Pirelli yeah. and the FIA messed up just a little bit. Um, and they had to limit the drivers to 18 laps on each set of tires during the race. And so that forced everyone into a three-stop um, strategy for safety reasons. Which I feel like that also kind of overshadowed the entire weekend. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and to start off for, for the race on Sunday, we had the really fun action of Lewis Hamilton and George Russell colliding on the first turn, um, which, A, was serious shades of the Hamilton-Rosberg incident in 2016 in Spain, um, and, B, George was just so rattled from all his radio calls that they had to have Toto call in. And I'm assuming that Toto, who was not in Qatar, um, was it watching from their base in the UK and, and they piped in one of his his radio updates to George basically telling him to get his head back in the game. Yeah, I was so surprised to hear Toto on the radio. I'm like, Toto's not here. What is he doing? Yeah. But it's, it's crazy how he has radio on 
even when he's not there. So Toto's mm-hmm. always watching. Um, so another in race incident. I'm gonna say it's an incident. Yeah. Um, Esteban Ocon threw up in his helmet in like lap what 15, 16, 17, somewhere within there. So before his first pit stop, and he still managed to finish P7. I threw yeah. up. I'm out for the count. Like the smell. I just can't get over like. I want to gag just thinking of him having to smell that in his helmet for majority of the race. Yeah, and he wasn't the only driver to have had issues. Multiple drivers after the race were passing out, had to be evaluated at the med center. Logan Sargent didn't even finish the race. Alex Albon needed help from the mechanics to get out of his car. And even Lance Stroll went straight apparently from car to ambulance to med center as soon as the race was over. Yeah, it's a rough rough weekend for everybody health wise um, yeah I, it's not good it's it's no. it's not good it's not what we should be having in formula one it's it's really well, they've already this come out and said like these are the measures we're taking so this doesn't happen again so like the yeah exactly clearly knows this is an issue also something to note is that the qatar grand prix next year is seven weeks later so almost two months later so it should be cooler um than it was this weekend. This should help with some of the health issues we saw this last weekend, but you never know. It's just really Yeah, I mean, one of the other big things is that this is, you know, this is really a MotoGP track, um, and it, it's really not built for Formula One cars, um, so it'll be interesting to see what the FIA and the Qatar Grand Prix are going to do, because for, for, you know, track issues itself, it's really the people who own the track and manage the track, um, and since this race is going to be on the calendar for the next 10 years, um, there's definitely going to have, be some, some things that they're going to have to change the FIA is gonna have to change the Pirelli is gonna have to reevaluate um in order for the issues that we had this race to not happen ever again or have yeah. different issues we'll never we, yeah. you never know um I th- so it, it's it's gonna be interesting no definitely speaking of Pirelli <laughs> mm, yeah <laughs> what happened this weekend with Pirelli so I just don't even know where to start I think they win the the dumb of this of the um, season. I mean, besides the double DNF, but dumb I of think, the yeah. But I think yeah, I think they win. Like this is up there on top five worst things to happen this season. Um, there were some issues with the tires. So, and what I can't believe is that they didn't tell the drivers that there were tire issues until it like broke to the media, which is insane. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely crazy. So, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, Pirelli basically came out and said, oh, so the tires are going to fail, and it's going to be bad, and we're going to put restrictions and limits on the tires for this weekend. So, that's what the three-stop, four strategy was for everyone to make three stops because they could not use their tires for more than 18 laps um, or they would get a penalty or like disqualified or something. They would have been disqualified. Disqualified, yeah, Yeah, thank you. It was disqualification. Yeah, so they had to do it. Um, And yeah, and it was just, I don't know. It was, I thought it was kind of annoying personally because then it's like you force people into a strategy and it ruins the whole race I feel like if you force people into that strategy but at the same time it's your safety so I don't know yeah and and you can you can make the the argument that it was a little bit more exciting to to have that that strategy but then you also have to do the math and you have to figure out well you know if he you know if if you know Lewis Hamilton has driven you know four laps on one medium tire then you know how many laps does he have on each tire and the, the broadcast did a really good job of keeping us they surprised did. as much as they could with, with you know, when, you know, what pit windows were. Um, but the other issue, and this goes back to the overall health issue, and we're going to talk about that, like, in depth a little bit later, um, was because the drivers only had 18 laps on each tire, they were going full out, which led to some of the, you know, dehydration, the, you know, they were, you know, the, the medical related issues that we saw that all of these drivers had. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, but yeah, not not good from Pirelli this weekend. Yeah, um, this is big shades of the 2005 U.S. Grand Prix, um, where there were two different um, tire manufacturers at the time, and one manufacturer got it right, and one manufacturer got it wrong, so everybody who could not go basically didn't go, and there were only six um, six cars that, that actually drove that race and finished that race, and it was just a whole heaping helping of a mess, um, but yeah, it was, you know, Pirelli, it is, it is their job to provide the correct tires, and they've made mistakes before, but this is you know kind of the the biggest mistake that we've seen out of them yeah definitely speaking of mistakes and bad things happening i feel like it just goes from good to worse um yeah so the sprint yeah 19 laps of pure chaos (laughs) no words no words to describe the sprint besides mass chaos uh Yeah. yeah I don't know. This, it was just not good. Yeah, it it was, you know, we, we've talked about, the, you know, issues with the whole sprint weekend format, you know, in, in the past, you know, Baku weekend was just horrifically boring. Um, and it, it's just, you know, th- this weekend was at the very least, you know, the chaos brought entertainment and things to watch. Um, but it's still just... They're, they're doing the sprint for the dollars, and I don't think that it's actually ultimately benefiting Formula One as no. a whole and the sport as a whole. I agree, and I hate that you get one free practice and then it's qualifying for Sunday. I think that's dumb. Exactly. I think that's so dumb. I think yeah, it, they need to figure it out to where you get the best of both worlds. I understand that, but the current format, I, I hate it. Because you have all, you have one practice versus three practices. Because racing in a sprint versus racing in a race are completely different. R- driving for quali in and doing the sprint shootout is completely different than a free practice. So they're not getting the same feel of the track. I feel like on sprint weekends and for a weekend like we just had, where there's so many different tire issues and the curbs are changing and things like that, I feel like they would have really benefited from additional free practices. Yeah, like they gave them the 10-minute familiarization session right before qualifying, but that's – or right before the, the sprint qualifying. But that that's 10 minutes, which is, is really – it's it's not enough and clearly did not work out for for the overall we had you know all those track limits issues that just were you know one of the biggest issues with those with track limits is those have to be evaluated manually with the way formula one is set up right now so you have really awkward things like oscar piastri being interviewed for p3 and qualifying and getting told right in the middle of the interview oh no you've been given a penalty for you you're you're your time is deleted for track minutes, you're actually P, um, P6. Um, so it, it really, I think that, I think the way to fix it is to go back to last year's format where you have a qualifying session um, that is the qualifying for the sprint and the sprint sets the grid. That's, and, and you have that gives you two practice sessions, gives you more time f- to familiarize yourself with the track um, and actually puts, you know, skin in the game for performing well in the sprint because that's where you will start on Sunday. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. And it's still interesting and fun to watch for the fans because they're going all out for the sprint because that is setting the grid. Exactly. So. Yeah. I, I, I've said it before. I will say it again. They just need to go back to the old format. And I think that no matter what happens um, at the end of the season, they will change the format for 2024. Oh, yeah. For sure. But I do think that the way to fix it is just to go back to the 2022 format. Like, let's let's not make it overcomplicated, um, and let's just make this suck less. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel bad for Oscar, though, because he won, and he's killing it as a rookie. And oh, big time. Sprint, and, like, nobody talked about it because it was, Max is world champion. Netflix, get the shot. Yeah. And, like, Oscar was off on the side, and he's like, hey, man, I just, I just won. I'd like some recognition, please. 
but yeah not only that but he became lando norris's second teammate to win i know that some people debate about whether winning the sprint actually means anything as like becoming an f1 winner but he has he has won a race before lando and this is lando's second teammate to do that because danny ricardo is the other race winner for mclaren um and he won at monza um so land and Lando is still waiting for his maiden F1 win, which almost came a few years ago in Russia, um, but then it rained and they gambled wrong on tires. And so Lando was still unfortunately winless. Yeah. Poor Lando. Oh, yeah. And then we go to the race that almost killed everybody. <laughs> Yep. Um, and and we, we don't take that lightly. I think that one of the, the scariest things was hearing what Lance Stroll was saying afterwards. And obviously Lance has just not been having a great time these last few races. But Lance saying that he, you know, was losing his vision on some of those high speed corners. That's bad. That's really like, dangerous. That too. That's like on the verge of passing out. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a blood pressure dropping issue, which you just you can't afford to have and when you're going 300 miles an hour no no and like the crashes that could have happened like the driver's safety was i mean always it's always paramount but sometimes you just think about their safety in the car you don't necessarily think about their like internal body safety for heat exhaustion and things like that um but it's absolutely crazy i he, listening to logan Sargent make calls on the radio oh my god yeah guys I'm, i really can't do this i'm 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 trying and and like hearing their the team be like mate it's totally fine come in if you have to we're more worried about your health than like finishing the race he's like i can do it and then he's like no i can't um no i can't it's just wild. yeah he's yeah like, you have to give him it. a lot of credit for making the right choice yeah i do because just thinking about it if, if he would have gone a little bit longer what if he passed out in the car and, like, you can't do anything exactly. at that point. He could have created such a, like, mass damage to himself and the rest of the field because he would have passed out. Like, that could have been so much more dangerous. I think he made a really good call. I know right now he's really fighting for his seat for next year and that he's probably thinking that in the back of his mind. Like, I need to finish. I need to do well. But at the same time, like, you know, if you crash and something really, really horrible happens, your career could be over. So I think he made the right move. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that that was the absolute right call. And I think that it was actually a really, you know, it's not something that you see very often in Formula One of, you know, a, a driver retiring for, for health reasons. And I think that it was it was really actually important that not only did Logan and the team make the correct decision, but also that they chose to air that um, yeah. and, and really showed just how, you know, bad it was health wise. Yeah, it's. I don't know. It's crazy. I didn't realize, like, how many people did not feel well. I mean, it's so hot. And, like... Yeah, I, I didn't... In the cool-down room, too, they were, like, laying on the floor. And for podium yeah. like, to talk... Like, the podium had to talk and do the post-race interview. And they were, like, sitting down. Like, they couldn't even stand. Like, that's wild. Absolutely wild. Yeah, they it was and and I didn't realize just how bad it was until um news was coming out in, in um Lando's post-race interviews um about, you know, drivers that were passing out in the med center. Like that's, you know, you we we didn't even hear about Ocon um throwing up in his helmet until like af way after the race, but you had, you know, Logan, you had, you know, Alex Albon's onboard being released where he needed a mechanic to help him out of the car. Um you had, you know, hearing about what, you know, Lance Stroll, Fernando's radio calls during the race where he was talking about, you know, he was semi-seriously asking them to dump water on him because yeah. uh, his back was was so hot because of, of where the engine is in the car. Um, it was it was it was absolutely crazy and, and not something that you're supposed to see in, in the sport. No, absolutely not. Um, well, and like the, some of the drivers were trying to do as much as they could, like they were um, put uh, like picking up their vents and their helmet to kind of like get airflow while they were driving and like George was had his arms out like going like this trying to create some wind just to like hit him um just to create some yeah breeze. just and them doing anything they could because normally they don't like flip up their visors at all but like coming into the pit lane they all did and then they would you know put it back down but um 
really crazy. This is this was a, a race that happened where a lot of things happened during the race that I hope we don't see again, um, just purely due to the fact that there were, you know, so many, you know, physical risks that, you know, we obviously we know from Singapore, Singapore is one of the most challenging races on, um, you know, of the season just because it is so humid in Singapore and it's, you know, so hot even at, you know, eight o'clock at night out there. Um, but this is this is just not something that that we you know need to see on a regular basis no absolutely not which is why i think it's a really good thing that they're moving it to november because it might still be hot but at least it gets them you know two months ish into a different season um so hopefully Mm -hmm. that helps but you never know yeah, they 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 they've they have talked about you know a a permanent street circuit, um in in Qatar instead of uh, the La Salle circuit, um but that hasn't really been talked about in a couple of years so it's you know we're running on the assumption that that means that we're gonna be staying at this circuit, um and this circuit really you know the the people running it need to to make some modifications to make this a, a viable track for Formula One cars and you know not just you know moto gp which is you know what what the track is mostly used for yeah because it's not like there's no other tracks out there for f1 like the india gp wants to come back and there's a bunch of them out there that are actual you know f1 tracks so they could definitely replace them but it'll be interesting it's gonna be really interesting to see what the schedule's like in a few years because i feel like certain um, races only have contracts through so many years. So I feel like we're about to hit a new cycle of either they re up or we get some new ones in there. I mean, I know we just got Miami and yeah, you- Las Vegas as new ones, but still. Yeah, and especially with the new regionalization, um, that's going to make things really interesting because you have, you know, a lot of the Asia races are moving to toward the beginning of the season. Um, you've got, like we said, Qatar is moving to, you know, November, and it's going to go back to back with Abu Dhabi and take us to the end of the year. Um, but it, it really, it, it's going to be very interesting to see, especially, you know, how weather has typically impacted certain races. Like you have, you know, Spa tends to be rainy, Suzuka you know tends spa, to be rainy yeah. when it's held this time of year so, yeah spa spa is a real real uh you know traumatic experience from the 2021 season um but yeah it, it's it's going to be really interesting to see how this calendar evolves you know and especially you know based on what we're going to experience going into next season yeah oh uh, well do you have any final thoughts on the race um, I, uh, think that, um, this, this, this was a race and it happened and, um, I'm really glad that the, uh, drivers have two weeks off so that they can recover, uh, before they come out to Austin. Um, and I also do want to point out that, um, Lewis Hamilton did get a pretty big honking fine, um, because he crossed the live track, um, when he, a- after the crash with George, um, and, um, I, I think that it's uh what was really interesting as i read an espr article about it a little while ago um and one of the cars that was coming by on the track even though this was in a safety car period because they were clearing his car off out of that gravel but one of the cars that could have potentially if something went really bad that could have hit lewis was his teammate george russell who was just coming out of the pits um so that really goes to show you that um crossing the track um when there's live cars is bad and that's why there's a rule against it. Yes, and don't do that. Though Netflix will be milking that money shot of Lewis trudging off the track all over DTS honestly, next season. We're calling it now. Honestly, I'm sure that Netflix will just pay the fine for him because they're like, this is content. Thank you very much. We will pay your fine. Uh, but- yeah. Yeah. Also, cool thing that happened was um, McLaren um, broke the world world record for fastest pit stop um, with Lando on a one eight point eight second pit, which was blazing. Like you barely saw the tires move before his car was move was was moving again. It was it was insane. Yeah, and it was previously held by Checo for Red Bull, right? It was like yeah. two seconds, yeah, something like that. 
1.9? Uh, I think it was like um, 1.9, something like that. Yeah, something yeah. something crazy like that. Yeah, and I was like, wow, that's the fastest I've ever seen. No one's ever going to break it. And then here we have Lando. And then they did. Breaking it. Well, yeah. what's interesting about it is um, I think it was last season they changed the way um, pit stops, um, the cars are released during pit stops, um, and they added like a human element to it that people were upset about because it was making the pit stops take longer. Um, and like, because instead it, it used to be like a car or a sensor, and that was leading to issues with cars colliding with each other on the pit lane as they were being released. Um, so it looks like, fortunately, the teams and the drivers and the mechanics have been able to figure out how to you know live with that human element in, in in those pit stops and are getting back to these really because we're seeing a lot of these like low two seconds you know high 1.9s this season I feel like yeah yeah it's it's much different than last season for sure um yeah also I think this was probably the highlight of my weekend when in the post race interview, <laughs> Oscar was um, being congratulated, you know, for getting P2, uh, which is his best ever finish. And he was, you know, visibly exhausted, but also excited. And the presenter yeah. goes, Oscar, I believe you've also been given, and Oscar's face just drops. And then he continues yeah. on by saying, driver of the day and Oscar was like oh my god I thought you just said I was gonna I was just given a five second penalty because there were so many track limit penalties given throughout the sprint and the race that Oscar thought you know oh my gosh not again please not again um because he did drop in yeah the, which he dropped from uh, it was P, what, he went from P to P4 P6. to P3 to P6 right Thank, thank you. P4 to P3 to P6. So there's yeah. lots of movement. And so his face just dropped like, God, not again. But um, I don't know if it was like intentionally delivered that way or if it was just like. Oh, it 100% slowly. was. David Coulthard is just like that. Um, and, you know, and, and even. Genius. Yeah. And even Oscar was, was like after I think it was the sprint qualifying where he's like, maybe we want to give uh, the FIA five minutes um, bef before actually confirming that I'm P2 just in case. Um, so he I, he he was he was a little scared, but he also was very funny about it. Yeah. No, good sport. Good sport. Um, I'm very happy for Oscar. He's doing really, really well in his rookie season, so it's, I'm really happy to see him, you know, doing well. Yeah, you, we we never would have expected this out of the McLarens going to like back to the beginning of the season when they were just the so six bad. Pit stop race um, from but it's Lando nice. Norris. Yeah, <laughs> like if you go back yeah. to the very first race of the season, Lando Norris had what five or six pit stops, and then eventually had to retire the car before the race was even over or whatever happened. I don't even remember; it was so long ago, but it was horrible. They like couldn't keep yeah um, temperatures up or down or whatever. There were so many issues. They were. It was a hydraulic issue, and they hydraulic, kept they had yeah. they they kept having to to re re up the hydraulic fluid. Um, people were per saying like, "What would it have been like if the McLaren that we have now was also driving at the beginning of the season, and just how competitive would would McLaren be? Would like even for per, perhaps the constructors' championship?" Yeah, I mean, I think Max is still gonna win, but I think it McLaren will oh, yeah. put themselves in contention because. We haven't gotten any points out of Checo lately, so. Uh, he got one this weekend. <laughs> okay. He DNF'd from the <laughs> yeah. one, and he got one point. <laughs> Nothing to write home about. I to be no fair, DNF, but. It, it's not, but to be fair, the Alcon was at fault for um, the sprint crash. Yeah, for sure. But it still happened <laughs> and he still didn't finish. And it's still funny. It's yeah, so yeah. Funny. He's he's got a lot of work to do to 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 maintain P two in the driver standings. Definitely. Yeah, because people are really starting to creep up. But yeah, if both McLaren's were mm -hmm. competitive the entire season, it'd be really interesting to see where they would land versus like Mercedes, Aston Martin, Ferrari. I mean I or even Red exactly. Bull. I don't know. I don't know. So Oh man. 
I think it would have been a little dicey for like maybe the first you know month of the season, and then be like, okay, Red Bull's got this, and it's then it's just like who's fighting for P two? Maybe, maybe depends on how many double DNFs Checo's gonna have. <laughs> yep, it'll never not be funny, Catherine. I have to keep bringing it up. It'll never not no be funny it, to me. No, it's it's hilarious. It's so funny, but uh, okay. Recap of our predictions. Yep. I did terrible. I I sucked. Period. Um, yeah, we we did we did not do do great. No sprint pull. We both said Max Verstappen. I feel like that was a really good guess. Yep. <laughs> But it was. was, and then he it just was. didn't do well in that qualifying, and the McLarens were really great. So, you know, credit credit to, to Oscar and Lando. Exactly. Um, and then for sprint podium, you had Max, Carlos, Lando. I had Max, Lando, Carlos. It ended up being Oscar, Max, Lando. So poor Carlos had a rough weekend. Um, but yeah, yeah, he didn't even make it out of Q2 for qualifying. That poor guy. I know. It was absolutely horrible. Yeah. And then sprint P8, so the last place where you can get a point in the sprint. Um you had Lance Stroll, I had Liam Lawson, but Right team wrong driver. Uh, and I just had wrong everything for everything. Yeah, it was kind of a bummer that Lawson did not have the the greatest weekend just because this is his last drive of the I season because we'll have Ricardo back in Austin. Um, so that was that was really kind of a bummer because he's just like that. That was not representative of his, you know, abilities. No, but they kept saying all weekend, like, he'll be back. He's coming back. Oh, yeah. Like, he's. A, yeah. So and I think he'll do well, but it's sad to see his last race of this season go so poorly. Exactly. Um, okay. Sunday poll, you picked Max, I picked Carlos. Carlos sucked, you were right. Mm -hmm, yeah. Sunday podium. <laughs> Go for it. Sunday podium, um, I actually uh, got it right. I just flipped Lando and Oscar, so that, that worked. And you had Lando on the podium. I did, but I also had Carlos, and uh, Carlos didn't even start the race, so. No. Yikes. Oops. Um... Sunday P10, we didn't curse anybody. No, we didn't. <laughs> We're redeemed. <laughs> yeah. Redemption. Yeah, and um, then it, it turned out to be Perez, um, who scored his one and only point, because he, he was originally P9, and then he had, like, 14 tracks limits violations, um, so that knocked him down to P10 after the race. Oops. Yeah. But, and speaking uh, of, for biggest surprise, I thought he was going to have a good weekend, and he didn't. <laughs> but I tried. I did have him for my doing a dumb, and I just said, Checo, period. You don't come back from the double DNF. And he basically did not come back from the double DNF. I was right on my, my dumb. But for my biggest surprise, I did say that it would take Max until Sunday to win, which pretty much he had to DNF and, like, Checo had to win, um, which... And that did not happen. Like, that did not happen, so Max ended up winning on um, Saturday and, you know, outshining Oscar's biggest moment in F1, which is really frustrating, but it's fine. Yeah. Also, to add um, uh, one little thing about Oscar, or not Oscar, but about Max finishing on, or winning the title on Saturday, is he's the first F1 driver to win the title on Saturday since Nelson Piquet, and Max happens to be dating the daughter of Nelson Piquet, Kelly Piquet, um, which yeah. I just find absolutely entertaining and I, I wouldn't call it small world because of course it's happening in, in Formula One and everybody knows everybody um, but I also still think it's quite funny that Max is also dating the woman who um, was dating an, um, Daniel Kvyat who was in um, the Red Bull car before Max took his seat in 2016 um, and Kelly and Kvyat have a baby together and Max is like stepdad now and it, it's all just we, we don't go into a lot of, like, the personal lives of F1 drivers, and we do that for a reason here, but that is one of the, the storylines of F1 and, and Max that is just one of the things that I'm just most entertained about. Took a seat and then took his girlfriend. And yep. And playing 
almost father to the child, so yikes. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for going uh for doing a dumb, you had Ferrari, which you know. They were they fine had, this weekend. Maybe they sabotaged Carlos's car. <laughs> Maybe they didn't. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. There's I've no reason to because because Charles out qualified Carlos, so there yeah. there 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 was no point. No, I but I, I maybe I, I they're like we're really only good enough to focus on one car, so one of them can't race, and then maybe we'll be okay if we only have to focus on one car. I mean, that could be a legitimate conspiracy right there. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But honestly, I think the actual dumb, like I said before, was Pirelli. And we could yeah. have predicted that one. That was not no. in my prediction sight line at all. Um, no. But, I mean, everyone's been talking about it. The big storyline is that Max won this weekend, so he's world champion. So I've gotten this question a lot from my friends who are, like, kind of getting into F1. But their question, and Catherine, I want an answer from you on this, is... So, Red Bull already won, and Max already won. What's the point of watching the rest of the season? Well, the point of watching the rest of the season is we still have a fight for the top three in the driver standings, um, which we have, you know, three drivers in legitimate contention. We have Sergio Perez, who has been P2 most of the season, primarily based on all the points that he was getting the first half before, you know, this situation that he's had. We've got Lewis Hamilton, who I've said many times is the type of driver who just sneakily grabs points um, that isn't really talked about during races because you have so many other stories lines um and so he's in p3 right now and he has um, pretty recently leapfrogged over fernando alonso who was in p3 most of the first half of the season um so that and considering fernando is still you know he's still getting points and i feel like they're you know aston martin is getting back to where they expected to be um that you do you are going to have this this really great battle for p2 um you're also going to have battle for you know the top three positions in the constructors champion um, and that all comes with a ton of money. Um, Alfa Romeo with their points haul this weekend, they both both drivers were in the points for once. Um, that allowed them to flip flop with Haas, who hasn't scored points lately. And every points posi- every position in the the constructors championship gives you millions more dollars. Um, so it's it's really about seeing how these teams are going to fight to finish as high up the table as possible. Yeah. That's basically what I told them as well. Not to mention it's just entertaining. So Also that. But, no, it's. I don't think people realize how much money is in the Constructors' Championships and how much the money changes, like P2, P3, P4, all the way down to... When do they stop with the money? Do you know? Everybody gets money. You just don't get it's a lot like, of money if you finish P10. Right, right, right. And, then it, and it's big jumps in between, too. So it's not like everybody it's tens of millions of dollars yeah it's it's a lot it's a it's a it's a big big jump so that's why it's still entertaining and so competitive even though we already have our constructor and our driver world champions so exactly there you go there you go well up next we have kota which i literally was just there (laughs) and i should have just stayed i know Oh my gosh, and every every single commercial on TV while I was home was Circuit of the Americas, Circuit of the Americas, F1, we have all these concerts, everybody come. And I was like, Ugh, I want to go so bad. I want to do. Uh, I'm so frustrated. Next season, but maybe. Next season, we have to go. Yeah, because I'll be back. Yeah, in 100%. Go team. Um, yeah. But we, like Catherine said earlier, there is a two-week break, so we have no race this weekend. Um, and then we have Coda. So that does give the drivers a little bit of Another sprint. Oh, but it is another sprint. I hate these sprint weekends, Catherine. I hate them. I don't like them. Yeah, I'm not a fan either. No, they need to be better. They do. They do. It's been decided, again, we have decided on the Going Off Track podcast (laughs) that they will be changing sprint weekends next year (laughs) and going forward. God, I hope So. so. There you go. Oh, well, 
that has yeah. been it for the podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. <laughs>